Friday, May 9, 2014, a chilling incident in San Diego sent shockwaves through the city. Seaweed 3, a famous rapper in the area, was going about his business in his barbershop. Suddenly, he was confronted by an unknown assailant who unleashed a hail of gunfire. The echoes of those gunshots shattered the peace of that moment, leaving behind a lifeless body and a community grappling for answers. Why did this happen? Was it a personal vendetta? Or did it have something to do with his past affiliations? The community demanded justice and closure, setting the stage for a pursuit that would unravel the motive and identity behind this devastating act. But first, who was Seaweed 3? Born on November 10, 1981, Lamar Kennedy was known on the streets by his stage name, Seaweed 3, or Seaweed 3. He emerged as an American rapper, hailing from the southeast region of San Diego, California. His music journey was marked by fruitful collaborations with fellow artists, most notably, Gucci Monster and I Rock. Beyond the harmonious chords, their bond was rooted in a deep-seated friendship that long predates their musical endeavors. Their camaraderie was a product of shared affiliations, specifically as members of the West Coast Crips. This was an African-American street gang renowned for its engagement in the illicit drug trade, robbery, and various other unlawful activities. Throughout his musical career, Kennedy released multiple albums, each contributing to his growing reputation and influence within the industry. Notable among these were Round of Applause, West Coast Official, and Deep Heat. Moreover, he was also the visionary founder and CEO of West Coast Official Entertainment, an independent record label that emerged as a testament to his entrepreneurial spirit. This label's inauguration was marked by the release of the album, West Coast Official, a fitting beginning to his journey as a music mogul. Barbershop Shooting and Death On Friday, May 9, 2014, Kennedy began his day like any other, opening his barbershop in San Diego. However, around 11.30 a.m., an unknown assailant entered the establishment and opened fire. And within five seconds, Kennedy was shot 14 times, with bullets striking him above the eye, leg, back, and multiple times in the head. Amid the violence, another individual stood guard outside, acting as a lookout for any potential interruptions. The assailants fled the scene quickly, leaving behind the lifeless Lamar Kennedy. By the time the San Diego police arrived, the grim scene was surrounded by an increasingly agitated crowd from the local community. Emotions ran high, and the news media and police officers faced hostility from many residents who were shocked and outraged by the senseless violence that had occurred in their midst. In the aftermath of this tragedy, a vigil was organized in memory of Kennedy outside the barbershop. The attendees included his family, friends, and even a San Diego council member named Myrtle Cole. According to a relative of Kennedy, his passing might be connected to the date of the shooting, May 9th. On that day, referred to as Hoover Day, there's a history of gang conflicts between Bloods and Crips. However, the family clarified that Kennedy had transformed his life and had not been a member of the Crips for over two years. They claimed that he opened the barbershop to give himself a fresh start. Arrests and Convictions of Murder Suspects On August 8, 2014, police were able to track down and apprehend two primary suspects in connection with the murder of Kennedy. Dion Chambers, aged 47, was identified as the trigger man, while Ian Patrick Guthrie, aged 38, had acted as the lookout during the incident. Both of them were separately convicted of committing first-degree murder in relation to the events. Guthrie eventually implicated Omar Grant, alleging that Grant sought retribution for a previous incident where Kennedy had been involved with a woman associated with Grant. In addition, Grant also felt that Kennedy was responsible for the theft of a large amount of marijuana from his possession. Following the subsequent hearings, both were found guilty and charged in 2016. Chambers was sentenced to 75 years to life imprisonment, while his accomplice received a 55-year-to-life sentence. Melissa Hernandez, the wife of Lamar Kennedy, shared her thoughts following the verdicts. She acknowledged that Kennedy had made his share of mistakes, but was actively working towards transforming his life. She emphasized that even if someone had a history of errors, it did not justify their death. Hernandez expressed firmly that no one possessed the right to take another person's life, regardless of their past actions.